All right, Bang Bang, today is Tuesday. It's June 15th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Here with Chief. Chief, Ice Cream Week continues. Happy to be a part of Ice Cream Week. Ice Cream Week's a big week. You know, I the way I live my life, every week is Ice Cream Week. So <laughs> You've actually been getting after the popsicles lately, I saw. And this is not an ad. <laughs> I'm just addicted been. to popsicles. You know, <laughs> it, it, it goes, this is not an ad, but I think it is somewhat related to my use of three cheat gummies we'll say that <laughs> so i have one of those at night and then i just decide i'm, I'm gonna have a box box of popsicles so i think it's maybe a little bit healthier than ice cream but you know i have been known to do like the jenny's ice cream delivery service too because i love ice cream i love popsicles frozen treats that's right up my alley you're directionally correct with that yeah as our friend white sox Dave mm-hmm. would say i think he stole that cap trace from me actually really yeah directionally correct has always been mine that's something i used to say in like meetings where i would get be getting drilled in some like you know some packaging meeting <laughs> and i would be like well let's not get bogged down on like the fractions of a penny details here like we're directionally correct we move on to the next slide and they're like all right yeah yeah and everyone just accepts it so now dave is trying to co- you know steal that from me and you just gave him credit I thought it was his. I'll be completely no. well, honest. Well, he's the, now. Well, it is. He's the king of being close, but not actually getting it right. So he just throws it out there because it's a way Dave's, for him to uh, save his ass. Has Dave been known to borrow a little bit like that, or? Oh, you think? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that goes on in this office. I well, would he say. made the band list too. Yeah, the band list. Yep. So, <laughs> um, so it's a mix of everything on Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Conspiracies, world history. Yep. We're doing popsicle ice cream history today. Ice cream fucking wars between the founders of like this entire space, which I uh, watched a History Channel show and did a little bit of research. It's fascinating. It's all I love learning new shit. This falls into that category. Like I didn't know any of this uh, when we first started talking about when you was like, hey, let's do something about ice cream. Started reading uh, about this guy named Frank Epperson and another guy named Harry Burt and how they're like. Uh, their paths for their ice cream empires uh, intersected and then they ended up both losing. So it's like a huge, huge industry worth over $4 billion now. Neither one of them really benefited that much from it. Wow. Yeah. So that's how much packaged ice cream. So if you're talking about like your dilly bars, your popsicles, any like those frozen novelties that you'll get at uh, either out of a truck or uh, in your freezer aisle at the grocery, at the grocery store, that industry is worth four, over like four point six billion dollars. So mean, much ice cream. That's get, a lot. It's yeah. a fucking shit ton of ice cream being had. But then again, I guess maybe I think it's no. I don't know what I would. Th- maybe I think that's a little low. You think that's low? Yeah, people that's love just, ice cream, dude. I know, but that people doesn't, love ice cream. That four point six billion doesn't even count like uh, Briar or no, I'm not Briars, but like Baskin Robbins and all these, oh, all, all, okay, like, okay. all like the parlors. Yeah, yeah. But even the, still though, people like, if you would have told me Ben and I mean, well, do you think that's crazy? Just say Ben and Jerry's did that. I mean, yeah, Ben and Jerry, I, I wonder how much they make because yes. they, they probably account for a large portion of that. Totally. Now they're huge. They're probably the most recognizable name of them. Even like, I, you know, my number one store, uh, grocery store, ice cream is Hagen dazs just like yeah, just a lot of people like that. 90 miles per hour on the black. They don't no frills, no additives. They're just like sugar, cream, ice, whatever else goes around. Chocolate. In Chocolate. But like they don't have any chemicals. They're just like, you know, there's all sorts of like guar gum and different things to like thicken up the ice cream. Hagen dazs like, no, we have one recipe that came up in like 1600, whatever. Really? Yeah. I did not know yeah. that. Is this in your research or did you just. No, I just know that. You know who that comes from? White Sox Dave. <laughs> No. For sure not. Marianne. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, I figured. Marianne, I figured. Marianne, my mom, is you know, kind it's of like a, white tux, Dave. a health nut. And, you know, she was on the uh, the, the dog walk in 2019 um, talking about Lyme disease. And then part of her thing with Lyme disease is that she doesn't eat anything that's bad. Like, she doesn't eat ice cream anymore, but, mm-hmm. like, I love it. So she's like, well, I'm going to find whatever is the most accessible but healthiest, quote, unquote, brand yeah. for for me and that turns out to be haagen but no ads <laughs> that's a pretty fucking big ad for it's a big ad right yeah there. yeah <laughs> um you're welcome send all right me, so where do, a gallon. <laughs> so where do we start here i think you start at the beginning that's where i like okay. to start so i mean the story is just it's so pure to me so this guy named frank epperson okay he's the guy who invented popsicles and he was from san francisco he was living in he's 11 years old living out in San Francisco and it was like an unseasonably cold 
day because, you know, out there, like it doesn't get super cold in San Francisco. So he was sitting on his porch. He's 11. He's they had these drinks at the time. They're basically you pour like a little packet um, into water and you mix it around. It's like a sweetened kind of drink. And he had his little stirring straw and he had this uh, cup and then his mom calls him in and he leaves it out on the porch and he goes out the next day and the thing's frozen solid. So he's got like this orange popsicle, okay, which is just had never existed before until he did it by accident, okay, and this guy Epperson. So he's like, hey, like this is actually pretty fucking good. He's 11 years old. And then he goes, you know, so he starts like making them like every winter. Like, hey, we're going to have a cold night. We're making, and he called them um, Epsicles. So it's like an icicle, but his first name or last name rather. So they're Epsicles. And so he, he just makes them every time it gets cold. He sets out this thing and they freeze overnight and everybody loves them. But it's like a small thing. He's just making them for his family. And then he's, he's now he grows up and he's, you know, it's like the 19, you know, late 1919 or something like that, early 1920s. He's got a family, you know, he's got a wife, he's got a couple kids, and he's, he's still doing the thing where he makes his, his epsicles. And then he's also st- like a very familiar story for probably stoolies, people like, and then, you know, you and me, they're in some job that he, he's working real estate and he fucking hates it. Like he just hates working in real estate. And he's like, you know, I invented these, these popsicle things. Everybody loves popsicles. I'm going to try to make this a business. And it's like easier said than done back then because there was no refrigeration. There was no freezers, right? So this is like, you know, the 1920s. So back then you got your ice one of two ways. You either, they legitimately had these things where they would go up to like, Alaska or Canada, like way up north or find these Montana where they had like these big, huge bodies of water, fresh water that are frozen over and they would drill out and carve out these blocks and put them on a barge and send them down to the rest of the United States. And then whatever was left, like what didn't melt on the way, they would sell those. And it was a big business. So you would just see these like huge chunks of ice. You've ever heard the expression called, called an ice box, mm-hmm. right? Instead of a f- fridge or a freezer. It was literally just because, all right, we're going to bury this thing underground and try to store food and keep things preserved, keep it cooler because it's underground, it's cooler. And you're just going to keep loading it up with these giant ice blocks. Then in the, in the 20s, for on an industrial level, they kind of developed a way to make ice for the first time, but they would make it and they would set, like, they would come out in these 300 pound blocks, like huge, like, you know, we're pointing over at the, the bear's helmet here in the corner of the new office, huge blocks of ice, like bigger than your, bigger than your fridge, right? Mm-hmm. Than your fridge in, you know, in today's, in today's day and age. So it's like, who the fuck can afford that? Who can make that? They really only used it for like meat packing. <laughs> So there was no real refrigeration or anything like that. So this guy, Frank Epperson, invents it. He's not like a chemist. He's not, uh, he's a real estate guy. He doesn't know dick about anything, but he's just like, I'm gonna trial and error and figure out a way to make something where I can freeze my popsicles so I can sell these things year round and make a viable business out of it. So he engineers this box that kind of seals in the temperature and figures out that if you take really frigid cold water and add a lot of salt to it, that that will drop the temperature at which the um, the ice, well, like the water in there will actually freeze. And if you think about like the oceans and stuff, uh, those don't freeze. Part of that is because of current, but a lot of it is because if salt water freezes at a much lower temperature. So some way he makes this box with this salt water solution, and then he takes test tubes, like literal test tubes, fills them up, with you know orange root beer all these different flavors puts a cork and a stick in each test tube and then puts this thing in the freezer and poof he is like i figured out how to make these things year round so that like he invented the technology to make popsicles year round even though he had no background in it he was just like i'm gonna figure out how to do this and pretty soon he takes like he starts making these and he takes them to um like San Francisco had these places that were, if you, you know what Coney Island is in New York? Yeah. They have the Ferris wheel and the beaches yeah, and, and the hot dog contest, hot dog contest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they have, they have like an equivalent of that in uh, San Francisco. 
So he starts taking them to places like that and they sell out instantly. Right. Everyone's like, this is fucking awesome. Like what? Like imagine having a popsicle for the first time. It's 1900. You know, what's also interesting is I wonder how he got to the point where he figure out how to get the test tubes off. Because that had to be miserable, okay. too. Test tubes off of the actual Frozen. Ice. That's yeah. a good you point. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's like, all right, I got this. Yeah. But how do I get rid of that? Okay, so it was actually, I'm, I don't know how we did that part, but it was actually a very difficult part. And we'll talk about this other guy, Harry Burt. They ran it. They had a similar situation. But usually, if you think of something that's frozen, right, and you pull it out, you're, just pull, you're not pulling the whole ice out, right? You're just, the stick would just come out of its mm-hmm. own. And that was like that. He part of like what these guys developed was that they would freeze it in a way that the solution that was in the test tube or we'll get into Harry Burt's thing as well. It would kind of seep into the wooden stick and then the stick would become one with the popsicle. Mm, So like that way, the stick isn't coming out. Now, if you're a very seasoned popsicle veteran like myself, on occasion, your stick will still slide out and that fucking blows. And then you're just out of a popsicle. You got to throw it away. That's usually when your freezer kind of sucks, though, I feel. Yes. Yeah. Like, you got to have the right type of freezer. And, you know, and, and but that is a thing where, like, the liquid would kind of solidify into the wood of the stick. Okay. Okay. So, and that, so that was the thing with this guy, with this guy, Epperson. And he's like, all right, this is a very popular thing. I've After Coney Island? After the Coney Remember, Island yeah. equivalent. I can't remember the name of the mm-hmm. actual place. Doesn't matter. But he's, he's selling out and, like, people are taking notice. But he's also, you know, blown his entire life savings trying to come up with this system. So now he starts going around and looking for investors and he finally finds some investors and he's like, look, I'll I'll do this deal with you, but I got to maintain control. I got to have 51%. And they're like, hey, man, like, no, like we're putting up all the capital. Like the same thing, like anybody going through like a, a deal with a private equity or venture capital firm now, like you can have all the sweat equity and the idea and all that but the people with the money ultimately hold the card so he he ends up doing a deal with this guy named low and low um you know he they're they're like good partners for a while though so now we're like into the 20s like and and they're making popsicles and pretty soon popsicles are going coast to coast right so they start out in california and it's like holy shit like popsicles are just fucking awesome because they are and still are and they become like a you know a national like summertime treat and that's when they kind of you know i guess we'll kind of go back in time a little bit here and talk about the other guy henry or i'm sorry harry burt because they have like a collision course that happens in 1925. hey let's take a quick break everyone because you know we got to talk about chevy drive chicago.com we're chevy guys we want to make sure that you're getting where you're going safely this summer uh go check out chevy drive chicago.com you can enter your zip code and it'll show you exactly where the closest Chevy dealership is to you. You can go to that Chevy dealership, get your oil changed, get your tires pumped up, whatever you wanna do, a Chevy dealer will do that for you because uh, it's the number one most trusted dealership in the Chicagoland area. So go do that, chevydrivechicago.com. Also, your local Chevy dealers wanna help you get where you're going with a $300 gas card giveaway this month which is great. I mean, everyone loves free gas, especially 300 bucks. I know gas is a little expensive right now, so that'll help you out. It'll go a long way, especially $300. So simply head to chevydrivechicago.com to enter to win. While you're there, check out all our latest offers, service tips and tricks, and find your local Chevy dealer. Head to chevydrivechicago.com today to go do that. Also, I wanna let you know that the shirts are still live. Go check out the ice cream shirts. We got five of them. We got Screwball, we got Chipwitch. We got the Bomb Pop, and we got the uh, just the Ice Cream Man uh, menu logo, I should say. So go check those out, and who knows? If they do well, we'll release more. Maybe we'll do Choco Taco, and we'll do a couple more. So go buy your Ice Cream shirt. Uh, the fucking Bomb Pop one, I got to say. The Firecracker, whatever you call it, wherever you're from, it looks pretty fire. So go do that. Go check out the shirts, and uh, go to ChevyDriveChicago.com. All right, let's hop back into the show. So Harry Burt, um, similar type of situation, He just owns an ice cream parlor, right? And he's sitting around being like, man, like I just, it sucks. I got to rely on all this foot traffic to get in here. Like I, and I can't come up with a way to make ice cream like portable the way that a candy would be. So he would sell candy and sell ice cream. And he's like, I just, you know, I, I have like this breaking point where I just can't expand because I can't grow. And he came up, he's the guy who came up with like that chocolate that, um, 
solidifies on the outside, that little crunchy chocolate on the outside of an ice cream bar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like the the good humor bar, like the yeah, original like good the humor standard, bar. Yeah, your stand- most standard ice cream you get. Exactly. A so, dunked vanilla. Right. A dunked exactly. Vanilla yeah. Stick. On, a stick. on a stick. And he was, um, he he. So he comes up with this thing, and he's like, "All right, like." he had the same situation where the the ice cream would seep into the wood of the stick and stay on there and he's like all right i got it i got it now i got something that's portable but it still wasn't really taking off so similar to epperson he takes all of his life savings and everything that he's made from the business and buys a fleet of trucks so you know this is like the model t original car henry ford truck and he's like, I'm going to sell my ice cream treats. And he figured out a way that had the motor of the car, like the engine of the car would also work like kind of double dip and would, uh, and circulate cold air. So he could keep like his ice cream colder. Like he just like invented it. Right. He just like invented like portable refrigeration. And, um, so he's like got these trucks going and he's trying to bring ice cream out to these different neighborhoods around Youngstown, Ohio, which is where he's from. And it's a complete flop. Like, really? Yes, really. So back then, you know, think of this. This is the 1920s, right? And late 1919, 19, into 1920. And before that, they had like they had like ice cream parlors on carts and stuff. And what people were doing was that they would like scoop out ice cream. Like, oh, what flavor do you want, Ed? Eh, I'll take vanilla. And they would put it in like a little uh, glass cup. Okay, because they didn't really have reusable paper, just throw it away shit. And they give the kid some ice cream out of this cup. It was, and this thing was like not refrigerated, so it was like melting and, and uh, whatever, but still pretty good. Mm-hmm. But they would just put it in this little like glass cup and like give it to a kid to eat and then scoop it for the next kid. So it was like not sanitary. Oh. It was insulated with like that ice I was talking about before and like hay. And there was like all kinds of health problems and like nobody trusted it now. Henry, Harry Burt was like a very clean guy, like just like kind of OCD, like yeah. that was just in his DNA. And he's like, this is like, this is a disaster. Like I'm losing, losing my ass on these fucking trucks. No one's buying my ice cream, even though the ice cream and the stick is awesome. No one will even try it. So he's like, I got to rebrand. So he takes his trucks and paints them all white. He puts like the good humor, like the like the first, like that ice cream bar. So now you see the ice cream truck at, at the beach or whatever, rolling around your neighborhood. It's got all the different things that they sell, the pictures of them. He, he painted the trucks white. And back then the only trucks or really any car on the street that were white were like ambulances. And so, and people associated that with clean, with cleanliness, right? Cause you mm-hmm. gotta, if you're operating, you gotta be super clean. And Henry Ford, he has some like famous quote where you can have any kind of car, any color car you want, so long as it's black. So like he didn't, he didn't, you want a blue car? You're not getting it from Ford. We're only making black. So you have to paint it yourself. So all the cars out on the street were black, except for like ambulances. And now this ice cream truck. So he has got the ice cream truck with the picture on it, with a little kid that says good humor. And he also put the little jingle bell on there too. So he had took the bell off of, I think it was off of his kid's bike. And he's like, we're just going to put it on this. Uh, on our ice cream trucks and that became like the modern ice Damn. cream truck so they're like he's invented this thing and it becomes a huge success all he had to do was paint his fucking trucks white and now this guy is off the races so he becomes like a national brand as well like at the same time kind of competing with epperson and he just picked good humor because it was he liked the name or like do you know basically that, yeah. yeah like he was just looking for like a wholesome friendly name and kind of settled on that and mm-hmm. so, like, Burt Ice Cream doesn't really ring as well as, yeah, 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 as, yeah. Uh, as Good Humor. And then he took that Good Humor. So he also, as part of this, he, he and Epperson filed, like, very similar patents, which was, like, a frozen confectionery, you know, sugar on a stick. So he, you know, Epperson filed it in San Francisco in that U.S. patent court. He filed his in Ohio. And they were like very, very similar. So what um, Bert did, because Bert was like this great business guy, is that as soon as he started having success, like a lot of people started trying to knock him off with doing these like ice cream truck things. And he would just sue the fucking shit out of them. 
And so people would be like, oh, I'm getting sued. And he's like, you can either go to court and I'll bury you in court because I'm making money. You're new. I'm big. You're small. Like the old uh, Matilda. Matilda thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Tomato. Or you can be a subsidiary and you, I'll license out the technology and you can use our brand. And he came up with like the good humor guys back in the day used to have like these crisp white suits and like they were just, they had the distinctive jingle. They had, they had the, their own brand. So he would license the brand the ability to do like you can use our truck you can use our actual good humor ice cream and then you just kick some back upstairs so we had like these ice cream truck franchisees uh run around different cities chicago detroit you know because he started in youngstown and he started building and building and building this empire and then he like it, what ended up happening was the re the way that uh epperson and bert like good humor versus popsicle started getting like head to head they both sued the same guy at the same time because they're like, hey, you're knocking us off. And then the patent court was like, oh, fuck, like these they don't know what to do. So they're both getting ready for battle. Right. We're, go we're going to court to see who has the rights to this thing. And Bert had offered uh, Epperson a similar deal that he was doing to with all these other people that he was smashing. And Everson was like, no way, man. Like, I invented this shit when I was 11 years old. Fuck off. Like, I've been putting, you know, sticks and frozen yeah. desserts forever. Oh, yeah. And so that he was, like, getting ready. They're going go to they're gonna go to court and battle it out. But he had surrendered, you know, control. Okay. So Bert does, like, a backdoor deal with Epperson's partners. And they <sighs> basically stab Epperson in the back rather than, like, go through all the legal shit. Like, we'll just make a side deal with Bert. We'll fold Popsicle under the uh, good humor umbrella. And then Bert, you know, he becomes like he's the guy. Like he, hey, like he says, I'm the frozen dessert guy. Popsicles are great. Now they're under my umbrella. We can sell them out of the back of my trucks too in case somebody wants a rocket pop or something like that. Come see, you know, come see good humor. And that person just left there like kind of with his dick in his hands. So mad that he decides he's going to sell all of his remaining shares. He's like, I'm fucking, I'm out of the ice cream frozen dessert game. And he sells his entire, his, the, the worth of his entire shares, 50 grand. 50 grand for something. Now, that's tough. In today's money, that's like roughly. That seven, hurts me. Yeah, roughly $700,000 in today's money. Roughly. How much? 700000 So for a business that. You know, does four point six billion dollars a year annually. He got seven hundred thousand dollars in today's money. So he went on like he lived a long time, or I, I guess, and was like he would invent different things, and he really like got into shampoos and things like that. But he never made another dime from the popsicle from popsicles. And it's basically because he like in a moment of desperation, when he's like, "This is the time to grow this business. I don't have any more money." I'm going to, I'll give up 51%. I don't know the exact number he gave up, but he gave up controlling stake in his, in popsicle to these, to this guy low and his partners and they fucked him. And then, uh, Harry Burt becomes like the ice cream King. Okay. And you're like, wow, they must've made out great for Burt. Wrong. He died. He just straight up dropped dead like two months later. Just dead. So like you have these after the deal, half two months after the deal, oh something God. like that. So then it goes. So like his shares get reverted back uh, to like that parent company, and like they get divvied up. So like now, like even if Bert had has some of his descendants like had shares, they didn't have controlling interest either. So now like this giant, and it's still like this this giant ice cream conglomerate. Like they own Briars. They still make the pops, all like the biggest famous popsicle brands. Good humor is obviously still huge. The, the ice cream truck business is not like their main thing anymore. Obviously, it's like the, the frozen foods aisle, the grocery store. But they had like he got the deal. He smashed Jesus. all the competition like he was um, like Bill Gates or something. Just going around just like, oh, you're using something similar. <laughs> Smash like whack-a-mole. All these people like just a ruthless fucking guy. And he finally like knocks out everybody and he's the king dead jeez dude. yeah that so sucks. and then it just goes back now it's just some corporate ent entity and has been for almost 100 years and it's a huge huge business. fucking epperson should have got it at that point well he well he was out yeah he was out he, dude, he, that's brutal he, brutal yeah so it's like i can't i was trying to think if there was like another industry 
like that, and I can't come up with one. Where it's well, a, here's the thing. Here's here's the way I see it. I guess you tell me what you think. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, credit to these guys. The main thing that they did was they found the technology. Yeah. The popsicle would have been invented at some point. You think? Yes. Yes. So part of the, they said part of the other reason why these things, in addition to, um, in addition to the technology, was because people were like, "You're selling my kid treats out of a truck." Okay, yeah. creep ass. So like we always think about like that. You know, like the, you make the joke about the people in like the white van, like those conversion vans yeah, yeah, yeah. being creepy. But they people back then were like, hey, well, don't try to sell my kid shit like on the street. Like that's in addition to being like the unsanitary thing, people like balked at it. So I don't know. It's like they were they were like rivals and they ended up neither one of them benefited. But they also kind of needed each other. Like the popsicle yeah. needed like good humor to come along. And like make ice cream trucks a thing, you know, like he, he definitely, you know, so like they both kind of needed like the, each other. I don't know if popsicles would have been invented. They're so fucking. But to cool. me, I think it's more of a stretch of being like, hey, let's formulate this that's already here into yeah. a, a dipped bar, and let's get this motor that makes it cold. Yeah, and these ice cream trucks, like a lot more went into that. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, but it's both. It's just like guys like trial and error, just figuring yes. shit out and things that we take for granted. Like, totally, and that's where yeah. uh, people are always like, "Oh, why the fuck did I think of that? Why didn't yeah. I think? Why didn't I do that?" It's not about the popsicle and the ice cream bar. Mm-hmm. It's about making that motor that cools. It's about yep. finding that, that salt solution. Yes, yeah. correct. That's and, what it's about. And like you can find records, I guess, of people having like, you know, like wine slushies in Greece. So there might be like snow on some mountaintop in in Greece where they like shave it away or a glacier or something. And they pour wine over it or they pour orange juice over it and they like make these like there's documents of that going back thousands of years but it's very seasonal Mm -hmm. and the shit melts and it was just you can't transport it really anywhere these guys figured out a way to like hey everyone's gonna love this i love popsicles year round i love ice cream year round but that was the thing like this is gonna be a refreshing treat in the summer if we can ever capitalize on it and they've like you said they they invented the technology and they were just especially bert just a ruthless motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, for sure. Ice cream, that's my shit. I'll kill you. And like, and he, and he did it. And then that, and, the, and that's why good humor and the good humor briars. And now it's like they folded in briars as a big part of their name. Now became like the kings. Yeah, and I'm not shitting on that. I mean, great. oh, of course, popsicle not. guy. It's great. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he, I'm partial like he said, the, the salt guy. thing. I yeah, know, I know, yeah. I know. And, but he, he got, unfortunately, he had to sell his steak, and that mm-hmm. that hurt him. You know, oh, yeah. and that's. That's a story that's all too familiar. Sold it to the wrong guys yeah. too. Like that's mm-hmm. really important to have like good business partners oh, yeah. who are you mm-hmm. are uh, you know ethically aligned as opposed to just you know getting a guy with money. You mm-hmm. guys got to have like the right guys. We have the same vision. And he's just he's just adding gasoline to your fire. Mm-hmm. And he sounds like Epperson picked the wrong guy. Damn. Damn. Wow, this was fascinating. I this thought was, so. Yeah. yeah. Was, yeah, and the History Channel, you know, they they have this series called The Food That Built America. Uh, they did like an hour, hour and a half or something on this story. So if you need more detail, you can you can try to look that up. But uh, but yeah, it's it's I I love stories like this, and this one, uh, yeah, especially hits close to home since I love ice cream so much. Yeah, I mean, this was a great great second day to ice cream week. So mm-hmm. thank you. Hey, anytime. Yeah. All right, everybody. That's it for today. That's it for this week. That's not it for this week. It's only Tuesday. It's only Tuesday. We recorded on uh, we only probably, yeah, recorded we're, on Tuesday. Yeah, we're pre-recording a little bit. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's it for today. We'll be mm-hmm. back tomorrow. More ice cream Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Keep listening. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. We'll see you tomorrow.